All right, question of the day. What is your favorite historical game? You know, I love Twilight Struggle because I love the Cold War. I love that whole era of history. Uh, but let me know in the comments below, what is your favorite historical game? Because today we're taking a look at Jerusalem or Jerusalem and Odomini. Now, I know what you're thinking, Brian. Don't you have a background in this? Yes, my background is an evangelist. I travel all over. I've been in Christian ministry for 20 years almost. And I love apologetics. I love all that sort of stuff. Which Now, why am I bringing that up? Because I saw the review that Tom and the crew did, and I actually played it in the Dice Tower Studios with them. Um, but I saw the comments, and a lot of the comments were like, really great, you know, like probing questions and like, hey, here's my story. Cool. Love that. Uh, but then I saw a lot of snark. And here's the deal. I love snark. I don't mind. I love calling myself the heel of the dice tower. I love a little snark. However, uh, I would love to entertain any kind of comments in this thread because I know this can be a firebrand, this game. So here's my only rule. If you're going to be snarky, make it witty. Because if it's not witty, I'm not going to comment. But I will go back and forth with you a lot of times. But just so you know, let me put this to bed right now. This game is not like William Lane Craig made this game. You'll catch that reference if you know you know. This is more like John Dominic Crossan made this game. And also, if you catch that reference, you know, you know, it's not done as a religious view. It's done basically by looking at kind of the texts of Philo and, and Josephus and extra biblical texts, as well as some of the, a lot of the information from the four gospels. So it's meant to look at, hey, if we looked at the historical events, there's no miracles in this game. There's nothing like that. There's a Sanhedrin. There's uh, people who followed Jesus. And then there's the supper. So it's done as a very, quote unquote, in caps, his trademarked historical Jesus view more than a evangelistic tool, if that makes any sense. So just to put that to bed ahead of time, because I know that doesn't put all the comments to bed, but like I say, I'm more than happy to entertain comments. I love it, but make it fun. Make it witty. Don't give me a spaghetti monster. That's just so boring and tired. Okay. So now <laughs> got that out of the way. I know I'm stepping on a landmine here anyway, but I'm excited about it because this game is a fun Euro game all about placement and action selection and resource management with a theme that's not really been done before. So let's take a look at Jerusalem and Odomini right now. All right, so this is a Jerusalem or Jerusalem setup for four players. And the reason I say four players is there's a little bit of varied setup depending on how many you play. And plus, if you're playing with one or two players, there's a Barabbas um, mechanic that you have to use, which changes things. So basically, it's a card-driven game in the sense that you're going to get your actions from these cards, whether the location actions as well as the follower actions down here. And when you play these cards, you're going to follow the phases of your turn. Basically, the first thing you're going to do you're going to play a card from your hand. Then if you want to, you can visit an apostle. And the way that works is you can visit one of the apostles here if you have these symbols laid out in the cards that you have played so far. And so essentially you'll need the symbols matching here. So we have uh, the market, the lake, and then the mountain there. So you would lay those out. And if they happen to just be sitting here in your discard in that correct order, or if you have one of these little tokens over here that gives you that, you can then take the apostle and place it out there. Now, the way this scores at the end of the game is your characters are going to be points based on how close they are to either the apostles or to Jesus. So let's say we have Thaddeus sitting here and your worker is here. Then you will get for this point, you'll get whatever's printed on Thaddeus. So he's five points. Jesus is seven. And as you go further away from those disciples and Jesus, you're going to get fewer points. So this is five. This space would be four. This would be three. Same with Jesus, this is seven, six, five, four. And it's two columns for Jesus, and they score both directions there. So that's essentially how you're going to be scoring there. Plus, if you are in these rows or adjacent to an apostle, you'll score it too. So it's kind of an in-game spatialness. Now, how you do that is you're going to be collecting resources in order to go to the Last Supper. And you can do that by uh, visiting these locations here. And you'll gain as many of the stone, the bread, or the fish depending on how many workers you have here. Now, the thing is, the workers you bring to the Last Supper come from here, which means that as you send them from here, you're going to be losing some of that resource-getting power that you have. But you can also always go to the market and buy and sell a stone for two, uh, bread for three, and fish for four, and you can kind of interchangeably do that back and forth the entire time you're taking the market action. Another thing you can do is buy a Mahane card. The would be one of these cards right here. You can buy them to add them to your hand, to add them to your deck. Those get used, you get them in your hand. And then these here in the 33 AD deck, cards will say, you know, take one of those. Those can be used one time and you kick them out of the game. 
There's a lot of other mechanics you can do. So let's talk about the actual actions here. So we'll go through the different list of the actions. Number one is listen to a parable. You have these nice tiles here of seven different parables of, from the New Testament. So you have the Good Samaritan, the Sower and the Seeds, the Lost Treasure, the Wedding Feast, Prodigal Son, the Lost Coin, and then the Good Shepherd. And as you collect these, they go down in points. And you'll put them down here, and then these are going to score at the end of the game. You'll get the instant points on them, but as you have more and more on your player board down here, you're going to score at the end of the game the amount of points that you have parables. So if you have all seven parables, it's these points plus the 18 for the set collection, which is nice. Another thing to notice, your resources are stored here on your caravan. Now, essentially what that means is that you only have space available for the people that are empty. Now, you can eventually open this up to get another space down here. Your favor tokens will also go there too, and those are worth a point at the end of the game. You can choose not to take those tokens so they don't fill up your area here, but that is an option you have. So currently you start with one bread, fish, and stone. You use those to do the different actions out there. For instance, when you're visiting the Last Supper as opposed to being invited to the Last Supper, you'll have to pay the cost associated with what its grid is. So for this space here, you'll gain a coin for putting your worker there, but you have to pay one, two, three stone to go there. For Jesus, it's going to be two fish plus whichever one you put him in uh, there. So this would be three fish. This would be two fish and two bread right there. So that's how that works. If you're invited to the Last Supper, which is a different action symbol, I think it's on here, yes. So this is go to the Last Supper versus be to the, this is go, this is be invited. If you're invited to the Last Supper, you just put your worker out on any space you want without paying any cost, which is pretty nice. The next action you can do is do a favor. That would be this one with the handshaking here. And essentially, you're going to give one of the other players one of your favor tokens, and they're going to get a benefit, plus you're going to move up this track, which is points during the game, plus this is how you unlock this. So different thing you can do. Plus, as you do a favor, the player who receives the favor immediately gains the benefit shown on the favor marker. Plus, you'll get a 33 AD card there. So that's how you gain those 33 AD cards is by giving a favor. Now, the next thing you can do is change places. Now, essentially, this means you can move one of your followers that is in the Last Supper space to any empty Last Supper space without paying the cost of it. So essentially, you could pay some, put somebody in a cheaper spot and then move them later to a more expensive spot. If it has a reward, you may accept it or decline it as normal, unless it's a meeting of the Sanhedrin action, which means that the Sanhedrin track will go up. And this is the game timer over here. Plus, whoever triggers these will get these bonuses on the Sanhedrin track over here. Uh, going to the market or the temple are pretty basic. You're just going to go to the market and you know exchange the money that you have for the goods you have and vice versa and going to the temple down here. Going to the temple allows you to send your followers to the mountains, to the desert, or to the... Uh, lake and the way you do that is you'll pay the cost here so one two or three and you'll send workers out there this is how you get workers here from your board so it empties out your board puts them here so that you can have more resource getting as well as people to invite to the last supper when you visit an apostle you'll also get the bonus given to it up top there some of them are invite you to the last supper others are um, that symbol which is the orange is you'll score for the apostle already mid-game and then white is you can immediately switch positions between one of your followers and another player's follower. So you can actually trade a position for someone else there. Um, that's what that is. Now, if you, if you open up Judas, it's minus five points, but you get five gold. So you can put Judas on the board in front of somebody who's got a lot of pieces there, and they're going to lose five points. And that also is downgraded five, four, three, two, one. The game will play until the last space on the Sanhedrin track ends at Calvary here. And then you'll score here. The person with the most points wins the game. Alright, so that is Jerusalem. Now, first and foremost, let's talk art, art direction, and mechanics. The art in this game is really, really good. I'm, there's a couple things I don't like, though. I'm not crazy about the stickers for the resources. I don't like those. In fact, I'm not going to put the stickers on the resources on. I just think they look a little... Uh, they don't fit the style as much. Now, as far as the apostles and the picture of Jesus and, and your disciples, they look really good. It's almost like this... Uh, it has a real kind of Greek Orthodox flair to it, where it's got that... Um, it's very old school, classic, almost Latin looking art to it. So I really enjoy the art in that. I think the board looks great. The board looks fantastic. The one thing that drives me crazy though, is the backs of the cards could be to me, uh, given another pass, maybe something a little more popping eye catching. I think they look a little plain. So as far as the art, the game itself looks really great, give or take one or two quibbles there, but the board itself looks amazing. Um, the, 
art direction. Now, the symbols are pretty straightforward. I do like that in the re the reference card, all 1,500 of them, because it's in every language that the game comes in, uh, are really nice. They really tell you what to do on your turn. They give you an idea of, okay, this is what this action does. And if you need help, the rule book's pretty straightforward too. So the symbols make sense. You see them and you go, okay, I know what that symbol means, which is always good for me. There's none of this like um, you see this symbol and then you see a colon and then times two with a slash minus sign. It's none of that. It's pretty straightforward. If you have this, do this. If you have this, do this. Uh, take this action, take these actions. It's really straightforward, which I like. And what's also straightforward is the placement of the characters. Like when you put your disciples out there at the Last Supper, the placement makes sense. It, it really kind of works like you get it. Okay, I pay this and I pay this. Boom, I'm done. So all that makes it. The only two that are kind of confusing during the game is invited and go to the Last Supper. Remember, invited is free. Go is you pay the cost. So that's our, that's our direction. Now, gameplay. As far as the gameplay goes, I really like this. I know Tom didn't like this and he, he I think he said it was too long uh, and he didn't really like all the collection and stuff like that. But I like this theme aside. I like the fact that this is a really cool interesting mechanic. You have this set amount of resource spaces in your area that you can use. And the only way to get more is by sending your disciples out there. And the only way to do that is by sending them out to these different locations that get you more resources. And the good thing about that is the more you have on a space, the more resources you collect when you get it. And you need those resources for these spaces. But you also need to start sending those disciples to the Last Supper. And I love the placement there, where if you're closest to the disciples, you get the most points. Now, let me talk really quick theming here about that. A lot of people will make jokes. And again, there's jokes of plenty. Um, everybody wants to know why you can't just make more fish and more bread, right? Um, but the, the main joke is, oh, sitting closest to Jesus, that seems a little counterproductive to, to the Gospels. Well, in the instructions and kind of how the designer has thought about this, this is more of a memory. You're not gaining points for being closest. You're gaining points because your memory would be the strongest. You were sitting right there. Like you're, you're tapping Peter on the shoulder. Be like, Hey, what did you say? Like you're right there. Versus if you're in the back of the room, you're like, yeah, I was there. I couldn't really hear anything going on. I didn't see anything. It was cool. I mean, I was in the room, but I don't remember. So that's really what the theming is about. So at the end of the day, this is a really fun Euro. I get people may run from the theme. I'd have no problem with that. Right. But if you can Put that aside and realize, okay, this is a this is a quote unquote, like I said, trademark historical Jesus game, not like, hey, you know, this is a tool of something that like, you know we would use in our show or anything like that. It's not like that. It's meant to be a first century AD Jerusalem. Because let's be honest, historically you can look, first century Jerusalem was a major hotbed of history. It just it is. But it's done really well. I think the mechanics are really strong. I love that placement. I love the push and pull every turn. I like the favor mechanic that you can give somebody else a favor to benefit you. To me, that's really cool. So at the end of the day, Jerusalem is a really, really good Euro game. I like the theme, obviously, but I also like the art. I like all of it. Really fun game, really engrossing, interesting ideas and concepts there. So I'm a big fan of this. So uh, check out Jerusalem, Jerusalem, and Odomini right now. I'm a huge fan. This is an eight out of 10 for me. Love this game. A lot, a lot of fun. So until next time, I'll see you.